Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at the Happy Model Mobula 7 1S. And I think this is the whoop to have. I know, I know, YouTubers, influencers, every product you get is the, the next greatest thing. Well, I don't like to think of myself as either one of those. I'm just a guy in his basement making videos. And I also like to think that uh, it's pretty rare that I actually say something so strong about a product. And so, buckle up. In order to prove what I think you might agree with, I've got all sorts of flight footage that we're going to have to take a look at. Hopefully you've got your favorite beverage near you. Uh, we're going to have an indoor flight, an outdoor flight. Uh, I do a bunch of dives. Uh, i got a crash reel. Uh, I've also got a DVR comparison just for good pr uh, purposes of being able to compare different goggles and what the image will look like to you. And they made some wholesale changes in here. This isn't just your run-of-the-mill whoop with, you know, by blades on it now. There, there's a number of things in here that have changed that we haven't seen before. So let's get into it. The one thing that I know that you've probably seen before is this camera. It's the Runcam Nano 3. It's got like the version 2, version 3 lens. The original was better, but unfortunately the company that made the original lens uh, went out of business early on in the COVID issue. So the new flight controller in here, they're calling the X12, and it comes in a couple of different varieties. You can get it with Express LRS, which is what I've got. See our little cube antenna. It also comes in FR Sky, Fly Sky, or you can buy it plug and play so you can add your own receiver, say Crossfire, Ghost, Tracer, what have you. But the kicker, it's got a 12 amp ESC, and it's got a 400 milliwatt open VTX in here, and I'm gonna do my flight test to show you what sort of penetration I get. The motors are very hard to see the print. Right there is kind of the happy model part, and then we rotate around. You might be able to make out where it says that those are RS0802 20,000 kV motors. And while the label on the motor might not get you excited, I bet you that 1.5 millimeter motor shaft does. Remember, we typically get only one millimeter in our 0802 motors. It's really hard to see, but down at the base of the motor is a PCB, so if your motor wires get ripped off, you can possibly resolder them right to that PCB. And this frame, while not exactly new, this is the first time it's come in a bind and fly. This is the Mobula 7 V4 frame. The telltale sign is this little canopy mount screw right up front here. I have one in clear as well, and we'll get to weigh that up if you're interested later. Also new is this canopy. Look at that. We got all four mounting points so our canopy isn't wobbling around. That should definitely help with our jello outside. Note, it has a little piece of foam stuck underneath the camera, just like we've seen in the past. But my other one doesn't. It also comes with this parallel charging board, uh, so that's nice. But you do have to have a charger to plug this into. That could be a downer for some that have gotten used to Happy Model shipping. Uh, the little charger we can plug into a USB port uh, to charge our batteries. This one is going to require that you have a battery to accept the balance port, as well as the XT60. It does come with a baggie of stuff. We get some extra screws, an extra set of props, uh, a proper mover tool, and a tiny little screwdriver, just like we normally do. And stickers. On my scale, it weighs just a touch over 24 grams. I found I get the longest flight time, but it doesn't fit as tight in the battery tray with this Xylo 450 milliamp battery. And with that battery, it weighs just about 38 grams on the nose. The GNB 450s, they get me about 40 seconds last flight time, which is odd, but they fit tighter in the tray. And with that battery, it weighs just under 37 grams. And a little bit for all our whoop builders out there, when we get back to the desk, we'll weigh up the different canopies and we'll get to see the differences as well as we'll weigh up this new frame because this frame is very durable. And if you're a racer, Maybe it's important, but if you're a hobbyist and you just like your frames to stay together, yeah, I would move to this frame. I'll tell you that right off the bat. I'll link all these parts down in the video description down below. Although the Mobula 7 1S 
is probably going to be pre-order or it's going to be on a rival notice as Banggood likes to put it on their site because I don't think this is shipping until the holiday is over. Okay, this is my house. We're gonna zoom zoom around. Well, I guess in some regards you might say I'm zooming around, but uh, if you watch real uh, whoop racing pilots, you'll notice that maybe I'm just going for uh, driving Miss Daisy Cruise because those guys are fast. If you uh, Maybe even if you watch Infinity Loops, I've mentioned them a few times on the channel, and you want to see some freestyle, hopefully they'll be able to get their hands on one of these and really explore it as well. So uh, hit up Infinity Loops uh, on their YouTube channel. It's with an S, not with a Z, so Infinity Loops with an S. And uh, hopefully they'll be able to spin this around. Uh, also, there are uh, some Happy Model Team pilots. Uh, have it, uh, Nathan... Uh, loops with a Z, uh, as well as Lucas. Uh, I'll link their videos if they have videos up on this down in the video description as well. Uh, and so one of the reasons why I think that this is one of the whoops to have is this might be Happy Model's best tune. I, w I was really impressed, but with that tune and it being so good, there's potential that if you change the props or you go to a much bigger battery, you may throw the tune off. So your tuning envelope could be narrower because it's better, but that might mean you have less flexibility when trying it with other stuff or adding weight, such as maybe you swap out the camera. That's a, that's a complaint I hear quite a bit about this particular camera, but when it comes to whoops, there's not a lighter camera on the market and it's got a super wide field of view, not as wide as it used to be, but it's still pretty wide. And it's much better than we had a couple years ago, that's for certain. Some of us suffered through some really hard times. I remember I spent $25 or $35 on kind of a flyer camera. I couldn't tell you the name. It was just some random camera off of Banggood. And I was like, why is that thing $35? So I bought it. Uh, it turned out it'd be a pretty decent camera, but you know, it certainly, you know, don't want to spend $35. And that was a couple years ago. That same camera now is probably 50 bucks. And it was just a little CMOS camera that was reasonable. It still had problems outside and, and bright sunlight. But uh, something else about this that you might be upset about is it's not going to be as quiet as other whoops. Uh, by blades tend to create more noise. So if being stealth, maybe you have a young child in the house that you're trying to uh, organize your flights around when they're napping. Might not work out great, but I've got the flight audio recorded, which is recorded on a separate camera. I don't record flight audio through my goggles or a microphone. I use a separate camera and then I blend that into the flights. I think it makes the flights more fun and interesting because you get to hear it. And I think the, uh, the audible of this is also pretty important. You can hear things with the tune. Some of our more veteran pilots will be able to listen to it and tell whether it's tuned like they want it to or if they agree that it's a good tune uh, or how it's handling different maneuvers, whether my turns are sharp and smooth or if I'm uh, making a correction and I'm doing something much less smooth. Uh, so that's an important part of it. Obviously, this flight is on the Xylo 450 milliamp battery, and if I recall correctly, it comes in uh, at over four minutes. So we still have a little bit of time to talk about this yet. Uh, the Xylo battery, I need to reiterate that, it doesn't fit as tightly in the battery tray. So I have found that with my crashes in the house, that it had a propensity sometimes to have a battery ejection something to note. The GNBs tend to be much stiffer and didn't move around on the tray. Um, if you have Emacs 450 milliamp batteries, they're essentially GNB batteries, same size, same factor, uh, same sort of uh, performance. Um, speaking of performance, the other thing I was a little bit surprised to see is that they didn't go to a different connector. So that's something that you might want to look at long term is either switching over to GNB27 or BT20 from Beta FPV or going to an XT30 if uh, that's easier or what you prefer. Uh, PH20 does break down. Uh, this particular connector does appear to be solid pin, so that is the best of the PH20. But you know, after I don't know 100, 150, 200, 300 flights, I don't know what the number is. I have never you know written it down to keep tabs on it. Uh, but after a number of flights, the pigtail tends to break down. You've got to, or excuse me, the connector tends to break down. Um, it doesn't. Uh, Let's just say your battery gets more resistance and your flight time and performance start to come down dramatically. And you will kind of know it when you see it. Um, you might get a four minute flight one day and then two weeks later you're down to a two and a half minute flight. And then the week after that you're down to a minute ten. Oh yes, we finally had our first crash. I couldn't tell you how many oh, times geez. I crashed these things because when it gets OSD. past two minutes and 30 seconds, I don't know if I, I need to take a nap or if I need a break, but I generally can't make it much past two minutes and 30 seconds. But uh, I made it almost to the end of the battery, but bad luck still had a crash. So that's one crash down. Let's go outside. 
All right, so we're outside. This is where you get to see whether it has jello in it or not. And I think, I always hedge when saying these things, but one of the things that I felt when I was flying this was that after I got into the battery, you know, I'd set the quad down and I'd started flying it. Maybe I was 40 seconds in, maybe I was two minutes in. I would sometimes forget I was flying a 1S Whoop and I would start to do things that I'm more accommodated to do with something that's not prop protected. And I think this is probably the best flying 75 millimeter 1S Whoop I've flown. It might be better than an 85 millimeter 1S outside. Uh, it's definitely gonna have longer flight time. The efficiency on this setup is ridiculous. And with it having that 1.5 millimeter motor shaft on it, we should definitely not be experiencing uh, motor shafts bending, at least not nearly the frequency, especially if you stay with bi blades. And the frame was really, really durable. I battered this frame all about. I, I went through 90 minutes of flight footage, so I just put it all in the editor timeline, and I just started scrolling through it, snipping out all the different crashes. So it's not anywhere near all the flight time I have, because I actually lost about 30 flights. Uh, some uh, some people know about it. I, for, I was kind of uh, checked out for about three days because my computer started giving me issues, and I ended up losing a bunch of footage. Um, I lost it off the SD cards. I hadn't pulled it off the goggles yet. And when I went to pull it off the goggles, it uh, got you know, corrupted and killed. I tried all sorts of different recovery techniques. And uh, to this day, I actually have a USB problem with this computer that's pretty new. Uh, every time I plug in a USB device, uh, not a USB de device, a mass storage device, I have to reboot the computer. I can use it one time, but if I disconnect that USB de device like a th uh, USB drive, I have to reboot it to use the next one. Oh, here we go, around the front of the house, VTX test. Uh, so many of you know that I have to have at least 300 milliwatts to get around the house. Remember, I'm sitting over there on the patio, my normal spot when flying, and we're going to do some more video testing here as I go over to my neighbor's house. Yes, they are aware. I have a little text chain that I uh, use that I let them know, hey, I'm going to go head out and fly here in about an hour. Has anybody got any plans outside? Let me know. Um, this is what I'm flying. It should be pretty safe. You know, in this particular case, I'm flying a little 1S Whoop. But I get to circle my neighbor's house too. And I thought the video was pretty clean. So if this isn't pumping out at least 400 milliwatts of video reception, I would be surprised. I would not be surprised if it was pumping out more. Because I think that's something that we've seen from the Happy Model implementation of VTXs is they actually will tend to advertise a little bit lower than it, what it actually is. Now, you might find at lower channels, like at, uh, oh, if you just fly one of the lower channels, the, the power will vary. So I shouldn't speak so broadly about it always being above it. The power varies depending upon the channel. Um, and it also, if you are running it on 25 milliwatt then you might find it's only 24 or something like that. But I think it, they tend to, on the top end, underrate their VTXs a little bit. I like doing some close proximity. I think I have a crash here as I get to kind of putzing around and having a little fun in and out of the uh, swing set here. I'm pretty certain I have a crash at some point when we get back to that. But, you know, whoops, something that's 75 millimeters. You can fly it in so many places, and this thing... You see how it flies outside? And the winds, as it reported on this day, was 9 to 11 miles an hour, although we're highly protected. We're behind houses, fences, with trees. We don't have any leaves, but I thought it handled the wind, and you could probably hear the wind in my uh, audio recording that I'm blending into this. You can hear it come up and rustle. There's a, um, a vine that's near me that um, the leaves will be moving and making some noise because the leaves are all dead. <laughs> but... So you can hear the wind, and it just, again, I kind of forgot I was flying a 1S Whoop outside, and look at that flight time still. Yes, this is on a Xylo battery. I bought, I think it was eight of those batteries, and I did charge them up for all these flights, and whenever I get the flight time like this, I know I'm flying the Xylos, because I get it about anywhere from 30 to 50 seconds less on my other 4S bat or excuse me on my on my other 450 batteries and most of them are pretty old and tired I think I went a little bit long when we come down here to disarm what's it recover to come back up keep coming so we're gonna get to 3.3 something volts so I was probably I probably should have shortened that flight by 10 seconds that's a, a rough estimation but still pretty fun flight Okay, this is a still image out of what I'm going to show you. And I, when you watch this small, it's going to be hard to see the difference. So on the left, we have our Sky Zone goggles uh, with the Sky Zone uh, receiver as well as, you know, everything stock on the Sky Zone except for some antennas. And then on the right, I have the Orca V2 goggles 
which I find the DVR and the V2 and the V1s to be the same. Uh, also running rapid fire, fully updated, also with antennas. And if you watch this in a larger format, I don't know if you can see it on your phone. Probably depends on the size of your phone. The Sky Zone DVR on the left, of course, they're different aspect ratios, but the Sky Zone DVR on the left, I think, has better color and it has more clarity. It has more sharpness. I think there's something about the Sky Zone DVR that is better than. The implementation, either the mix between Rapid Fire and the Orca DVR, that makes me want to switch. But we're going to get into the end of this, and I'll show you why I don't think I'm going to be able to switch. But this would, at the very least, give you some indication, uh, especially those SkyZone uh, O4X owners, what you will be seeing in the goggle. A little better representation of what you see in the goggle. Uh, so they're both 60 frames per second DVR, and uh, hopefully the flight footage doesn't cause you problems in trying to diagnose the differences between the two. But again, I think you have to see it in a larger format. And, and this was kind of a flight that I had dedicated to doing this sort of thing. And I'm not going to show the whole flight. Uh, I just want to show uh, the first part of this flight so you can see how everything is in sync. Because when we get to the end of the flight, we're going to find that it's no longer in sync, specifically with the Sky Zone goggles. And I don't know why that is. I suspect the Sky Zone goggles are skipping some frames. They're not recording every frame. And the Orca goggle is recording every frame. Because when you put it into the timeline, you get different results. And we'll see this as we get down to the end. But I wanted to show you some of this flight just to kind of a proof and concept so you know that I'm not, you know, telling tales out of school that it did sync up very nicely in the beginning of the flight, but at some point in time, it slowly starts to lose the synchronization between the audio and the flight. Uh, because I am using a separate camera, it's sitting there on the table, and I record that, I use a little movie clap, and then we uh, take off flying, and I synchronize that in my editing, and uh, uh, I do use Adobe Premiere. Okay, let's move towards the end. We saw a little bit over a minute of flight, that flight, and we can see that it's synchronized. And I'm going to have the opportunity to show you another crash with sound, so that's always nice. Uh, we're nearing the end where I'm going to have the crash here, and then when we do, uh, we'll pause it. Oh. So here you can see I've hit the tree on the left, and I'm still a few feet from the tree on the right. And if you listen, uh, we won't do it, but if you listen to the audio, hitting the tree on the left is early, too, according to the audio. So then the next point is... Let's go to where we lose video because the battery does eject. Again, the Xylo batteries don't fit snugly in the tray. So as we can see here, my battery is ejected on the left and I don't have any video. So I've got the uh, classic static. And then on the right, several frames later, uh, still have video, battery still connected. So unfortunately it looks like the Sky Zone DVR. While it looks better, it's sharper, it's clearer, and I wish I could show that to you all the time, it's gonna cause problems when it comes to me being able to record my flight audio and then blending that it all in. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to stick with the Orca goggles. And because I do want to switch, I think the Sky Zone goggles are very, very good, but that DVR doing this sort of stuff with so many micros is really, really important. Okay, so you've seen most of the flights that I'm going to show uh, full screen. So tell me what you think. Uh, am I crazy? Uh, is it not as good as I think it is? And would you be surprised to find out it's not like $200? <laughs> it's not $200. It's probably going to be about $110. So pretty reasonable. And the funny thing about this is I was doing a lot of conversions of Happy Model Mobula 6s into Mobula 7s. Matter of fact, I... I think it was a year ago I posted a video that I had one underneath a magic cloth and I had a thumbnail kind of like this where pretty much all I had done was taken a Mobula 6 and put it in a 75 millimeter frame with 40 millimeter props. They, they just fly better, larger platform, they fly better, uh, more efficiency, so you get longer flights. It just, it seemed like a natural mix, but I know there's some uh, classic whoopers out there, whoop races that probably only allow 65 millimeter. I'm not certain about the fact of if you took this and put it in a 65 millimeter frame, is it going to be as good? I don't know. I would think the motors would just be as durable. Maybe you're wondering about the motor weight. We'll take a look at that too here in just a minute. But take a moment. Let me know. Am I telling tales out of school? I'm pretty confident, but maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm just feeling it. Maybe it's not as good as I think it is. Maybe it's one of those things where you need to have it in your hands and then you can tell me if I'm crazy. Let me know down in the comments section below. I am all ears to what you might be thinking. Okay, the new 0802 1.5 millimeter motor shafts, 1.99 grams. This is 19,000 kV 0802s, 1.76 grams. So it did definitely add some weight. 
but I still think there's something compelling about that motor shaft. The frame weighs uh, 5.45 grams. We can compare it to this frame, which is really made for 2S, but it is a very robust frame. It's 5.35 grams. So that would tell you a little bit why of uh, the durability factor went up. It's got more material, so it's heavier. Okay, now for our canopies. This is the Anubi Drone Goober Canopy, 1.27 grams. The Goober B-Brain Canopy, 1.26 grams. This is the Crux 3 Canopy, which works really well for, say, Caddx Baby Retail or Caddx Baby Retail Nano, I think it is, that $25 Retail camera. Uh, 1.36 grams, because you can screw mount it right in there. And then this is the canopy that comes on the Mobula 7 1S, 0.79 grams. But unfortunately, unless you add some weight for your mounting of a camera, it's got a kind of a wide stance on it. So putting a traditional 14 millimeter camera in there, I don't think it's going to work. And if it does, it's going to poke way out the canopy. It's really made for the short nose and the mounting on the Runcam Nano 3. That was information I thought our builders would really like to know about. Also, something else I want to draw your attention to is if we look at the back of these, I put a mark on these. And I did that. See the, the mark I have right here and right here and how this one doesn't have that. I just took a, a little silver marker and I marked those because I wanted to spend most of my time flying one of these particular quads so that I could have all these crashes and we'd have all this abuse to look at. Instead of flying them both back and forth, which is probably what I'd do if I you weren't doing this, making a video, I would switch back and forth so to uh, space out the durability uh, influence of all the crashes. And uh, I said it earlier in the video, but up there is my crash reel. I took 90 minutes of flight footage and just went through and pulled out all the crashes. I shouldn't say all the crashes. There's great potential that I missed some of them. As I was scrolling through there, I must have spent an hour going through that footage. And then there'll also be, just be some uh, general flight footage, uh, especially outdoor. I had like a super crashy flight. It was kind of at the end of my flight session. It was kind of a last pack. And so I was just kind of flying and wasn't really paying attention. And, and I wasn't flying particularly well. So I had lots of crashes, which is good for us because it, a proof of concept of uh, the additional durability factor. Uh, so obviously my Cube antenna is still fine and it's in place. No worries there. Uh, the canopy's still good and mounted up. Matter of fact, I could probably have uh, tightened that down a little better. I did not tighten that or change that uh, when it came out of the box. I did change the camera angle when it came out of the box. Um, I just unscrewed this and then stuck my fingernail in there and pushed it down. I, I want to show you the Xylo batteries and, and how they're just... You could probably tell when I just put them in. They just... They, they, they kind of slide in pretty easily. And therefore, when you have crashes, they can have a tendency to come out. Uh, initially, I was putting them is this way, which I ended up in more uh, batteries uh, being ejected. And my battery was more towards the back. I like to fly with more of my battery weight towards the front. Uh, so when you put in the 450 from GNB, which uh, race day quad is going to be about the same. It's just a little bit more finagling to get it in there. Uh, so it's going to hold on to these batteries a lot more. And if you want to fly bigger batteries, 520s, 650s, 720s, I'm not certain they're going to fit. So be careful about wanting to do that. Uh, again, it, this is probably one of the better tunes Happy Model has done. So if you add weight, it could throw that tune off. Just be prepared for that. I'm not telling you not to tinker and not to have fun. Just be prepared for the... If you make changes, there may be other changes you have to make in order to get it to fly well again. So if the dimension of a battery is the same as the 450 as far as the uh, width and thickness, then it should fit in that tray. If the dimension of the battery is more, it's going to be a little bit tough. Uh, keep in mind that when you're put jamming batteries in here and you're making this plastic or whatever this material is move around, expanding, that it's going to weaken that center area and the battery tray. So you might find your overall durability changes a little bit. So you know, I would stick with the 450s. You still get plenty of flight time. Get the Xylo batteries if you need that extra 45 seconds to a minute. Uh, USB port clearance. Hopefully you can see that right there. We got, we should have, as long as our battery tray stays intact, we should have good USB port clearance. If these little pieces here start to break, uh, your USB port clearance might, might decrease or be diminished. I didn't show it in the quick specs, but here is a good close-up look at our pigtail. Now to me, hopefully, as I look through the viewfinder here, 
I hope I'm not telling tales out of school. I think that is solid pen, but I really can't tell. So you get to see it firsthand. Also the camera, it's really tough to show you. The camera does have a little bit of camera protection, but you know, if you hit something, especially something that's not very thick and it hits right here, I wouldn't be surprised if it still hits the camera and the lens. These lenses have a tendency to take some damage kind of poorly. Or maybe it's just that there's so many out there that people report uh, damage to camera lenses with uh, regularity. I couldn't say which. It's always a hard thing when it comes down to numbers. I have no idea how many are out there. But uh, you can possibly, you know, refocus those if you haven't cracked the lens or broken something inside the lens. Uh, heat it up a little bit. Heat out the, uh, the kind of the nose or the center round section. Heat that up a little bit and then try to turn it. Sometimes they have glue on there that doesn't heat up very well and you have to just kind of crack it, which makes a terrible sound when you trying to make a, that uh, finesse maneuver to refocus your lens. Um, if you got no image at all, camera's dead. Get a new camera. <laughs> Sorry to say, but uh, that's our reality. I don't know if there's too much more to show you about this. You know, whoops are pretty simple and we've got these all-in-one boards now that just have everything built into them. They got the ESC, the flight controller, the OSD, the VTX. It's got everything in there. That's a good thing for whoops because of weight. But if something dies in the board, we generally have to replace the board. We can't afford to uh, repair it. Or we don't have the experience to repair it. Or we don't have the little tiny components that we need to repair it. Or it's just a serious pain. And I bet there's a lot of you out there that build micros that are going to want these parts. And these parts aren't going to be available separately for probably weeks after this becomes available. So if you're wanting these parts to tinker and build with, you're probably going to need to buy one or more of these. And I wouldn't be surprised if we find them actually in stock and sailing off of AliExpress before we do Banggood or any other site. I am told some of these have been shipped to some U.S. vendors. I haven't seen them listed yet, so as of this recording, I can't say for with any certainty that you're going to be able to go to Race Day Quads or Pyrodrone or Get FPV or any of our favorite FPV shops and buy this quad. So you may have to go and buy it from a foreign market or you have to have your patient pants on and wait. So as I said just a few minutes ago, if you're a micro guy like I am and you like what you saw, whether you want to fly it in a whoop factor or not, you probably have some build plans, some build ideas, or you want these components to replace some of your components in your own builds that you already have. And I wouldn't be surprised. I, I might try it myself, especially when the production ones come out on SHD zero barrel right on this just put it right over the top it's going to stack us up a little bit but I'm curious about the power and performance of these motors and adding that weight which will probably be somewhere around six grams which is a lot this is 24 grams dry but I still would try it I'd put uh, the HD zero one S board, uh, the new one that's probably going to be about three to three and a half grams on this and see if we can't make a go of it that's what I do. So let me know if I'm just too excited about a really good flying whoop or if it's not that good a flying whoop. You can tell me it's all right. I could take it. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, let me know down in the comments section below. I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching.